Hello everyone and welcome back to Niche, the tribe of the sea. And uh, we are here with our tribe who's been in a little bit of trouble. Uh, we've had some balance bears lurking around and I don't think we can see them now, but there's one over here somewhere and there's one over here somewhere and hopefully they will continue to leave us alone. Now, I also want to say that uh, I'm trying out some new video stuff. I'm trying out the uh, 60 frames per second option. So hopefully this looks a lot smoother to you guys than the previous version or than the previous episodes have, uh, depending on which resolution you're watching in. So definitely let me know if you do see a difference and if you want me to continue with this, uh, because I'm just trying it out to see if it works better. <laughs> so hopefully it will. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in and uh, see what does Disaster hopefully won't befall our tribe and I think do we have anyone who's going to pass away I don't know that we do so let's go ahead and we'll just start our new day and oh there's the balance bear <laughs> okay oh who, ooh, who's okay we have to deal with this immediately okay it's Luna who has the leech let's bring Perry over here uh, get the leech off and lick her wounds so those raised ranas don't attack her. Now, we've had a lot of other leeches attack. And I think what we'll try and do is see if these guys can lure that balanced bear deeper into the water. Now, there's the other one, too. Um, and where did... Oh, the bunnies have stolen from almost all of our berry bushes, it looks like. Not this one, thankfully. Oh, that's right. We have a berryina over here, too. Let's make sure we stay out of the way. Uh, we don't want Flounder getting into any trouble. Now we can let Gutavon dig, and then... Where is the balance bear? We want him to be at least, um, at least three spaces away from the balance bear at any given time, because then it can't reach him but we are kind of trying to keep an eye on it. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully uh, it'll work out okay. Now, Lobster isn't strong enough to attack the bunny. In fact, I don't think any of these guys are, so we're just gonna ignore it for the time being and uh, see if maybe he can find some coconuts to pick up. Yes, okay. And let's also go ahead and we'll breed Carrick and Crab. Actually, we already have, but we needed to, um, we needed to find more of the uh, more of the nesting material, and so we'll go ahead and try and do that, and see if we can have Crab have her nest on this turn. Now we had little Nuku who was born, and I have high hopes. Yes. Okay. So Nuku is actually a really really good creature for the genetics we're trying to breed for. Now, we still haven't had a female with the poison fangs, but currently Nuku is our best male because he also has the uh, double claw, and eventually that's the line we want to try and integrate our poison fang creatures with when we actually have them. So let's go ahead and we'll change Nuku's name, and I think what would be a good name for him? I think we'll go ahead and we'll call him Crate, spelled like this which you guys are have told me is a type of marine venomous snake. So a poisonous sea snake, basically, or I, I guess it would be venomous. <laughs> you guys have corrected me on that before, and sometimes I do get it mixed up. Um, if it's poisonous, I believe that's what happens when you eat it, and so that's why uh, if you these berries are poisonous berries, if it's venomous, then it bites you and it gives you it poisoning. So that's why the poison fangs in this give the venomous trait. So it's a little bit complicated and I sometimes do mix it up, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be. All right, let's see if Angler can catch this Ray's Rana. Yes, indeed. And who all has leeches? Um, oh no, it's Perry. Perry who came to the rescue of Luna here ended up getting a leech herself. And uh, who else? Oh no, Sardine has one. Uh-oh. And Palm too. Oh my goodness, they both ended up getting leeches. Now, let's make sure they too stay at least three spaces away from the balance bear. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, so if we go here, it can't reach them. And we can put Palm down here. Now, let's see if Brizo can find anything around here. And where she can dig, and she did indeed. And then maybe Salmon, I think we'll bring her over here and have her gather up this shell. And let's see, who else had a leech? There's more creatures who have it. Oh no, Anapos herself has a leech. And okay, this was Sardine and Palm, okay. So we're good there. Let's just make sure that we bring Aquarius back 
and then we can move little Bermuda this way, put Annapos here, breed them, and then have Aquarius remove that leech for her. So Annapos has, uh, no longer has a leech, and then this new little baby I want to take a look at here. So she's got pretty good genes, and we want to make sure we can pass on this line, and so let's take a look. Gene A, E, and D. Actually, Bermuda could end up, uh, they could end up potentially breeding if we have to, and again, some inbreeding is going to happen in this series because uh, otherwise we're not going to be able to pass on the genes we need to. We are going to try and uh, have more breeding options soon. Hopefully this line will start to uh, be more functional in terms of being able to actually... Um, like being able to start breeding with this line and uh, adding some new genes to this. But for now, I think we're going to go ahead... And we'll call, we'll call this little one, I think we'll call her Alaska. With, uh, with her white fur, she very much looks very snowy, and uh, Alaska is known for a lot of sea life, such as, uh, killer whales. And so I feel like it's fitting names. We have Alaska and Bermuda, kind of opposites, but, uh, at the same time, they're, they're both geographical. Now, let's see, I think Nala... Hmm. Well, we need to... Okay, we do have enough now so that uh, we can have crab nests, so that's good. And I think... Let's see if maybe we can bring Moray over here. And yes, he can crack some of those coconuts. And then Junko can come up here and be ready to gather. We can also have Tadella start digging around as well. Now, let's make sure we move Anako out of here... And then Blossom can come over here and breed, and uh, we'll see. Let's go ahead. Uh, we named Crate already, and let's see if Nala can head this way and maybe help us with the gathering eventually too. Now we need to gather up this shell. We need to we need to get as much food as we can, basically. So let's see if we can dig. Unfortunately, no. Uh, is there anywhere any of these guys can dig? Well, they can try, and Stingray can come over here. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of luck though. Let's also, let's actually bring Newt this way because Newt might be able to uh, end up uh, catching some of these bunnies perhaps if we're cautious with him. And I don't think there's too many turns left here so we'll probably go ahead. Oh wait, we haven't, we haven't uh, done anything with these guys yet. So Scallop and Kirku are trying to have some babies to pass on. Uh, these extra genes and hopefully have some babies who carry the platypus beak as well. So little Is Is Isira, excuse me, does. And unfortunately, she still has the same genes as all of the others do. So what I think we'll probably end up doing is I think Kirara is still going to be our one to pass on the K immunity, hopefully. But uh, let's move her up here. And then we'll bring Scallop over here, we'll breed them again, and we'll go ahead and we'll name Isira. Hmm. I think we'll go ahead and we'll name her Cambe. Which, uh, I don't actually know what that, uh, that the meaning of that is. Sometimes you guys submit name meaning, sometimes you don't. And so I do try to say it when I do see it, but I don't see one here. But we'll go ahead and name her Cambe. I just feel like that's kind of a suiting name for her. Uh, it seems to suit her. But uh, let's go ahead and we'll start a new day, and hopefully no no disasters involving balance bears. Um, okay, that one's continuing to follow. So let's make sure that we have Flounder gather from here. Lots of leeches by the sound of it. And let's see. We can gather here, gather here. Where is the bunny stealing from? I don't actually know. Oh, it might have been up on the mountain. And let's see if Moray can gather up some of these coconuts and then maybe continue on. Is there anywhere else he can gather? No, but we can bring Nala over here to help. Yeah, there are more coconuts over there. So let's see if perhaps, well, no, Karara can't, uh, I can't, she can't gather or she can't reach over there, but maybe on a turn soon. Like, we can position her right here and she can gather up some of these coconuts. And then we have little Kirta born, who does have the G immunity. Okay, so we don't need to keep breeding these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll change Kirta's name as well. Um, hmm. I think we'll go ahead and we'll call him Coco. 
And because uh, that he kind of has an almost a uh, cocoa colored, I mean, I guess he's not quite as dark as you generally tend to think of when you think of, of like a, a cocoa bean or whatnot, but he kind of, he kind of makes me think of, it kind of, he's got a little bit of that light chocolatey coloring in there. <laughs> and let's see who was born here. So these guys both have the uh, platypus beak double, so they're guaranteed to pass it on, and indeed, Ceresi does have it. And she does not have the doubled up immunity, so that's good, but she does have the immunity eye. And uh, so what we're hoping for is a baby who would have E and D, and we have not seen that yet. So let's go ahead and we'll breed them. There we go. And then is there anywhere around here? Yeah, we could actually bring Carrick right here and have him dig. And then maybe Newt can keep making his way over this way. Let's make sure we bring Crate out of the nest. I'm kind of hoping this bunny will, will stumble a little too close. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so unfortunately she has the same genes as Crate, but where, where'd he go? Is it Junko? It's Junko. G and A. Yeah, unfortunately their genetics are too similar for them to be able to breed and hopefully pass on those poison fangs double. But uh, it is a start because Serrera is a female with the poison fangs and the first one who actually has that. So let's go ahead and we'll change her name. And I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to name her Bahari. That is the, uh, it means ocean and Swahili is what you guys have told me. So let me go ahead and clear that out of the name list and we'll bring Blossom back. Uh-oh, we can't actually have her repair the nest on this turn, though. That's not a good sign. Uh, maybe we can bring Anako over here and see if she can... Uh, no, unfortunately, she didn't spook the bunny in the right direction. I was kind of hoping she would. Maybe Aloha can help as well, or at least try and dig, maybe? No, I have a feeling we're not going to be able to uh, get that bunny on this turn and spook... Speaking of, well, not of bunnies, but of leeches, Luna has a leech, and who else would have a, who else has a leech? Uh-oh, is it you? It's little Alaska. That's no good. Well, let's see. So we also had another baby born, um, and we determined that these two are going to be the ones to carry, it, to carry on the legacy, so we'll mark them with blue and uh, start working on their genetics, but I'm probably gonna breed these guys a few more times so that we have some more double-clawed babies. Uh, we'll do it just a few more times. And we have Anakoko, who we'll go ahead and change her name as well. And I think, let's go ahead and we'll just, we'll actually, um, uh, hmm. I think we'll go ahead and um, we'll, call, we'll call her Luciana. That's a pretty name you guys have submitted. I don't know, again, the meaning of it, <laughs> but uh, it feels like it fits. And let's make sure that Amber gathers up some of this um, some of this grass because we really need to make sure that we're, we're not the grass, but kelp. We really need to make sure we're getting that because uh, we need to replenish our, uh, our supplies here so that we can repair these nests. There we go. Oh, hello. Okay, oh no, I, oh my goodness, Cam Bay, maybe we ought to change your name. I thought you were a little bunny sitting there. I was like, wait a minute, but no, that's Cam Bay. She just isn't following us right now with her head because uh, she's already used up her moves. My goodness, maybe we should change her name to Bunny because she sure looks like one just sitting there. I mean, we have a bunny over here. There definitely is a little bit of a resemblance there. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll actually, I think, well, well let's see if, well, let, let's move Scallop over here and then we'll see if Kirku can come dig and then move out of the way. And let's see. Okay. Oh yeah. We need to make sure Kutavon stays away from the balance bear and continues to lead it away. So one, two, three, one, two, three. If he sits here, he should be safe. Um, and he can actually gather some of this nesting material. That works perfectly. So he should be out of reach of the balance bear. So that at least is a good thing. And now let's make sure, finally no leeches. Where did the balance bear go? It's actually right over here. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a risk 
and we'll let sardines sit a little close to it because I kind of want to see if they can lure it into the water. It has 25 days left on its life, but I'm curious as to whether it takes drowning damage. And I mean, if it does, maybe our creatures would start to take up the tactic of uh, luring dangerous predators into the water where it's more their advantage than the predators. Who knows? They could become a sort of siren luring a luring creatures into the deep where they may never return. <laughs> they might uh, end up uh, having a little bit of a siren-like tendency. Let's actually look at Alaska and uh, Bermuda as well. So we have high fertility, normal fertility, normal fertility, normal fertility, so we need to put the high fertility in there uh, for both of them to try and pass that on as much as we can. And eyesight is good. We're not doing anything with the nose just yet. Water body's good, claws good, webbed hind legs is good, so we don't have a tail for Bermuda. So let's go ahead and put that in. And then Alaska has the swimming tail, but uh, she doesn't have the tail fin, and so I think we'll do the same thing for her. Are they at least a little bit genetically better than their parents? Um, I mean, they both... Oh no, Alaska doesn't even have the, the swimming hind legs, that's not good. Uh, she's actually worse off than Aquarius in that respect, although Aquarius does not have the tail at all. He just had the swimming tail, and Anapos has it double. I don't know, it's hard to say if they're any better off than their parents. They're honestly about the same, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll, that'll change in future generations. Now, I think, okay, we have this whole group over here. Let's see, let's let Marlin be the one to gather up the algae because a stingray would be a lot better. Well, no, I don't see anything for him to hunt anyway. So let's see if maybe these guys can come and gather some of this algae up and then maybe try and dig with the platypus beak. No, I, no such luck it seems. Well, Angler can still try and follow and see if she runs into a Ray's Rana? Unfortunately, no, it doesn't look like it. Oh, but she did find a shell. The Ray's Ranas have all come up here by the shore. Maybe they know that uh, the land is not where our creatures thrive, and they might even be a little bit safer there than uh, further down in the sea. How interesting. All right, I think that's about it for this turn, so we'll go ahead and we'll start another new day. Okay, there's the balance bear. And I don't know where the Berina went. But let's make sure that we gather, oh my gosh, there's just the sound of leeches collectively biting our creatures and it's a little bit terrifying. Uh, let's make sure that Marlin, who's one of the unlucky ones to get a leech, well let, first of all let's see who has it. So Palm, why don't you go pull a leech off of a sardine here and we'll make sure that Bismarck has his removed as well. And Marlin also has one, so let's bring him up here. We can have Lilac remove that leech. Who else has a leech? Oh no, Brizo has one. Well, she at least can dig, but we'll make sure we remove that. And then the Balance Bear is still up that way, so maybe we'll have Sardine venture a little closer. I guess she didn't really need that, but okay. <laughs> uh, we'll have her venture a little closer and see if she can lure it in. It's being pretty smart so far. And this bunny has wandered close enough for Newt to snatch it, so that is a good thing. And of course, Lobster can gather up some of these, um, some of these coconuts. Now, ooh, Sierra, unfortunately, oh man, she does have proper immunity, I think. Yeah, she would be genetically compatible with Crate, and they both do have the ram horns, which is kind of nice. But um, she does not have the poison fangs, unfortunately. So I think we'll go ahead and I'm going to actually name her... I think I'm going to just name her Aqua. Um, she does show off some of our water genes quite well. But we're still going to keep breeding to make sure that uh, we have the chance of having a female born with the poison fangs because much like Crate, we really need to pass, like, we need, we need to make sure that we have someone who can pass those on. Now, okay, we had little Rara born and I think we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna call her, I'm gonna call her Shimmer, I think. 
because uh, I can imagine her white fur making her shimmer a bit from a, if you were watching from above as she dove into the waves. But I think we are going to actually go ahead and stop breeding these guys. Oh, and there was a raised rana. And there's fish. There's normal fish. Okay, Bermuda, why don't you go ahead and catch the normal fish? And then, oh, Alaska has a leech. Uh-oh, that's no good. There's the raised rana. Okay. Oh, and two of them. And there's fish down there, too. Wow. This is almost like, well, I mean, it, I guess it, it's kind of, <laughs> it's like a gold mine of food. Oh, my goodness. And here, okay, Perry can't actually pick up that, uh, that, that clam, but we were able to get it. Okay, we did get rid of these leeches, right? I just occurred to me that there were some... Oh, no, Amber has it, but fortunately, Alaska had a turn left to pull that off. But uh, let's see if these two can manage to uh, perhaps catch this Razorana. I don't think... Oh, yes, Luna did. Good job, Luna. Wow, she's quite resourceful. And Angler, who's quite expert at catching the Razoranas, can make sure that she catches that one. Well, Stingray grabs this one. Maybe we'll see if Bismarck can step up here. Oh my goodness, an angler can catch another one. Well, Bismarck gathers up that shell. Oh, and it's Manta's last day. Let's have him gather up this, uh, this kelp here and make sure that he's surrounded by his fellow travelers on his last day here. Now, okay, the Baryena's gone that way. I think Flounder should still be safe, so we'll leave him off to the side there. Let's let Kutavan snatch up some of these, uh, some of this nesting material and then run. If he sits right up here, he should be safe and out of the balance bearer's reach. But he does need to continue to distract it so it doesn't target the rest of his family. Now, little Coco can step up here and maybe we'll bring Scallop this way to... Oh, it's, it's her last day too. Well, we'll let her gather up these poison berries because that's kind of become a custom in this tribe too. Much like it has in uh, in, in our, our Heart Island tribe. Now, Junko can do some gathering there and we can let Kirara gather up that, uh, that coconut as well. Let's actually bring Mori over here to grab this one and Nala can come over here and grab this one up as well. We could even bring Tadella over here and have her pick up this one. So we got quite a few coconuts this turn. That's one advantage of our tribe being right on the shores here, so that's a very good thing. Let's make sure... Oh, we never named Ceresi, did we? Um, we'll go ahead and... I think I'm gonna actually call her... I'll call her Manatee. Um... She, I mean, she's not, it's, it'd be kind of hard to have a creature that would actually look like a manatee in this. Uh, so, I mean, it's not necessarily the most fitting name, but it's also a very water type name that uh, does suit the theme of the tribe. And let's see if Anako can manage to swipe up. Nope, couldn't quite catch that raise run. I was hoping she'd get a little bit lucky. Is there anywhere we could dig? We could have Kirku step up this way and get ready to dig up on uh, up over here by this healing plant. Now, I think, hmm. So far, it looks like pretty much everyone, yeah, I think, I think pretty much everyone has used their turns properly. Maybe we should bring, oh, let's bring Crate this way because he has the double claws and he could actually catch that Raze Rana. And then I think everyone here has used up their turns pretty much. There's not much left they can do at the very least. Is this bunny stunned by the coconut? Why don't we have Flounder take a swipe at it and just see if he can get lucky? If it's permanently stunned, he might be able to catch it. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's too much left that we can do for this turn. And it is about time to wrap up the episode, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.